Yo, what's up, comrades? So, I finished, um, I downloaded a whole batch of, well, this guy claims it's all the audiobooks for all the, um, light novels that have been translated into English and then, or dubbed, or, I don't know what to call it, all the, that have been translated into English and then made into books on tape, audiobooks. So, I got this huge batch. A lot of them are just, like, volume one. I don't know. I'll have to check to see if this gets updated, but it's, it's free. It seemed pretty thorough. I mostly was looking for Overlord, and then I noticed they had Tanya, the saga of Tanya the Evil on here. It's only like the first half of the light novel series, but that's more than the anime got into, and I really like that anime, so I was like, I'm going to start with this. So the saga of Tanya the Evil, the premise is, um, there's this salary man who's very, like, middle of the road. Uh, middle of the road is in, he's competent, but he understands his weaknesses, and he's just very dedicated to being successful in like his realm and he has like a firm grasp he has almost like an autistic grasp on like bureaucracies and how things work and he explains it very well anyway at some point he's like firing people at his company because of layoffs you know because he was able to avoid that aspect and then he, he's like a middle manager and one of the guys he fires pushes him in front of pushes him in front of training and he dies so then he's in like heaven quote unquote and he's like heaven. there's like a god figure and he's like talking to everybody about stuff and then the um the main character he's like thinking He's like, well, this whole system's like very poorly designed, and he's like complaining. To, he's, he's not even complaining. He's just thinking about how poorly it's designed and how they could like update the systems and how they could be more efficient with like the way they handle things. And then the god character he refers to is like Mr. X, I think. Um, I think it's Mr. X. It's X something. Right? I don't know if it's Mr. X or I think it's just Mr. X. Anyway, he um, he's like, hey, what are you what are you doing over there? <laughs> the guy's like, you're talking to me? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, I'm just talking about your system. It's like very poorly designed. And he's like, I'm God. I can do whatever. And he's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really believe in God. So I'm going to call you Mr. X instead. <laughs> and the guy's like, I'm going to teach you a lesson. And the guy's like, all right, whatever. So he puts him in the body of like this little girl who's being born. Right? He essentially just is reborn. It's not like he's put into the body. He's like reborn as this girl. But he keeps all his like memories. Daddy. So he still has all his expertise. So he keeps all his memories. Um, so it's funny, because he's constantly having conversations with himself about, like, oh my gosh, these people are so poorly done. Anyway, so he's like a little girl, and then this is a world that's kind of like pseudo-pre-World War II kind of world, and the countries are like somewhat European slash American kind of valued. So he's in kind of like the Prussia, I don't know to say like World War One versus World War Two. yeah, it's more World War One. So he's kind of like the Prussia-German kind of federation area, and then there's like one that is like kind of like America-ish, and the one that's kind of like French-ish. And stuff like that. <laughs> There's not like a, a firm designation, but it's it's just kind of like so the the country he's born into, they're like the most technologically advanced, but they're um, I think they're the smallest, or they have like the least amount of people or something. Anyway, but they so they become very militaristic to kind of protect themselves from all the people that are surrounding them. And it's like everyone's allied against them, but in, you know it's like a situation like in Europe pre World War One where everyone's kind of like constantly um, jostling and like the threat of stuff's going on. So this world also has mages, but the mages aren't like magic specific. There's, there's like a brief explanation about, there's like magic technology. So some people have access to mana and then they can push this mana through like these orbs and it can allow them to create some magical stuff. Um, but the magical stuff's like shooting a gun, for example. I mean, everyone has guns, but it's like, they call it, they call it like a shooting formula. They call them formulations. So it's like a, a flying formulation, a breathing oxygen better formulation, stuff like that. Um, and the computation orbs are what they use to kind of focus the mana and allow them to do these things. So then Tanya is the girl, is the name of the girl that he becomes. And her, her parents like die in a previous battle or something, so she goes to an orphanage. She's raised in an orphanage. Or no, I think her mom was never around her. And her dad was a soldier who died, so she got put in an orphanage. And so he figures... Another thing, there's oftentimes the character, like the main character, will refer to himself outside of being Tanya. Like, like oh, Tanya is like frail fame or something, something. So it's kind of interesting. I don't know if that's ever going to go anywhere or if it's just kind of like a weird translation. If like he's actually Tanya or Tanya and him are like sharing the body. It hasn't come up yet. I just, it's like one of those things where it's like, that's an interesting like differentiation, differentiation to make. That maybe might lead somewhere. Um, anyway. So he joins the military academy because there's like the only way to get ahead in life as like a little girl orphan. And he gets through the office because he, he's so smart. 
<laughs> because he's essentially like a 35 year old, 40 year old man in like a, a 10 year, nine year old girl's body. He's able to like excel, especially because he has uh, he has decent magic potential. And he, at some point, he says he doesn't have great magic potential. He's just it's kind of average. Oh, but he's so smart, and he's he understands bureaucracies and how things function. And so anyway, um, sorry, my my kids are interrupting me. I talk. All right, so um, shoot, I lost my train of thought because it's been a minute. Um, okay, it, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so so Tanya slash the guy. They work their way up, they become a second lieutenant, which is the lowest rank, officer rank, in the military. In America, too. In Japan, because Japan's kind of built based on our military, I think. So, um, and she's a mage, and she's just, like, chilling, doing her, she's doing, like, forward observing for, like, an artillery unit, because this, this country, this random country, just said they were going to, like, invade for some reason, and she spends a lot of time uh, pontificating about, like, why they would do such a dumb thing, because it doesn't make any sense, because we're just going to get destroyed. Um, and the, the, the book goes back and forth to different... Uh, point of views. At some point, it goes to the, an officer on the other side, and he's thinking the same thing. He's like, "Why do we do this? These stupid politicians are trying to like maintain power." It's not a good social commentary, like surpri- shockingly good social commentary on like political parties and how they they do poor things and how they don't care about people um, and how they're just trying to stay in power. So this this war with I think it's called the Anton Alliance. They, the empire just kind of decimates them completely, and part of it is because of Tanya. So this, this mage unit, this mage battalion, tries to push forward and destroy the artillery. And the only person that can stop them is Tanya. And she's like, oh man, this sucks. And so she figures the only way to do it. Like, if she runs away, they're going to kill her for desertion. And there's no way she can beat them one-on-one because there's, like, a whole battalion and there's just one of her. And so she determines that the only thing she can do is self-sacrifice and hope that she survives. Which she does. So she takes out, like, the entire battalion by herself, stops them. And she receives, essentially, the Medal of Honor equivalent it seems like there's some point that the book goes into some details about the different metals the levels like what it would take and it talks about how most people they call it the silver wings i think most people who see the silver wings it's like post humorous or post sorry, humorous. it's it's as, after they die and that's the same thing with metal honor like there's very few like living metal of honor recipients like i think there's like six right now um but she got it because she essentially almost died stopping this thing and it was like this huge thing and then we get we get a take from a lieutenant colonel who's like very distraught. He's like a human resource guy, so which means he's terrible. Because most human resource people are absolutely terrible. So this again, it's like <laughs> no joke. But essentially, he saw Tanya do some stuff while she was in like a cadet training that made him question her like ability to not be completely evil. And so he's like, I don't want to give her this reward because we don't need her, but at the same time, as long as I keep her on the front, like, I guess she's going to do what she's going to do. And I can't necessarily turn it down because there's, like, all these, like, generals, essentially, recommending this award for her. And if I, I do that, that's going to, like, look weird. They're like, well, why? Why do you care so much about this? Like, it's going to bring up a lot of questions. And this guy, I can't remember what his name is, but he comes up with these concerns, like, several times in this book. Um, he's got, like, a real beef with, like, the potential of Tanya to do, to be, like, a psychopath, essentially, which she kind of is, because this guy, again... That's yeah. possessing her body is like, or th- that's her now. Yeah. He's kind of, he's got like a strange kind of like, again, it's like almost like autistic yeah. viewpoint. Like he's very focused on like the bureaucracy and like maintaining, doesn't have a lot of emotions towards yeah. people necessarily. He wants to like protect his, his team because it makes the most sense and he just wants to live. So I don't even see if he's like a, it's a socio, socio disorder autism. It's just like, he's very set and like, I want to survive and I want to be successful and have a comfortable life and I will do anything to make that happen. Um, so it's interesting. All right, let's see so yeah, so the this colonel's not a big fan of Tanya, obviously, but you know she gets her silver stars, or she gets the silver, silver wings, which is like the middle of her. Yeah, um, she then gets assigned to a test unit um, because she almost died doing the self destruct thing with the orb and whatever, and she starts testing this orb, which is like four cores, which is like unheard of, and it keeps like almost killing her. And then there's this scientist guy that her and they, they go back and forth and fight a lot. And she keeps requesting to be removed to a different area. And, and it looks like they're about to like move her because they're like, all right, we got to like, <laughs> like she's, she's the only one who's been able to like get this or this core, this orb to do anything. It's computation or just like prototype. But like we, there's only so many requests before it's like, Hey, we got to do something about this. <laughs> Cause she's, she's like a silver star. She's got, she's got all these kills. Like she needs to, we need to like preserve <laughs> like, our fighting force. Um, while that's happening, there's like a group of gods 
like including Mr. X, and they're having like a conversation about people's lack of uh, religiosity in all the different worlds or whatever. And one of them's like, "Oh, we should do more relics," and they're like, "Yeah, we can try that. Let's do that." So then one of them goes and visits the scientist, and is like, "Hey, I'm you know God. I'm gonna help you with this orb, make it work. Just do this thing." And then they also visit, and then Mr. X like visits Tanya, and essentially is like, "Hey, they're gonna do one more test with this thing." Um, where we've like made the orb, this orb of relic, which means like, if you want to survive, you got to like pray to God essentially <laughs> and have faith. And then it's going to slowly corrupt. It's essentially, uh, Tanya recognizes that it's like, a, it's cursed and that the more she uses it and relies on the power of God, the more it's going to like corrupt her mind and change her to be like more religious, which is not who she is. But you know, she gets it, she gets the orb to work. Um, at that point, and then, you know, by doing it, she has to, like, make this pronouncement of God, and, uh, you know, she's like, well, I hate it, but at the same time, like, the, the Empire really, re like, they like religious people, so it's not the worst thing, because it makes her look really religious whenever she uses stuff, or this pronouncement, or whatever. Um, so then she gets assigned, at that point, there's uh, another another front on the war opens up, so the Anton Alliance is being decimated, but this other, like, the Republic, I think, is going to take advantage of, like, the chaos, and they're going to attack also. So now the they got the empire's got like two fronts, and so they they sent Tanya to the to Mage Battalion on that side, where she performed so admirably. She ends up becoming like an ace of ace, which means she has over like sixty confirmed kills, and she ends up taking out like a whole other like battalion of mages at that point. Like a and they 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 go on this whole thing about like name battalions, right? They're named because they've earned like a lot of recognition. So they send this, and she gets she's known as like the Devil of the Rhine. Right, which is more references to like the German Austria thing, but um, she's known as the Devil of the Rhine because she has so many kills. And then this name battalion like tries to get her, but she's able to defeat all of them. Partially because like the, the new computation orb lets her go twelve thousand feet in the air, or twelve thousand meters, whatever. Well, <coughs> most people can only go up to like eight max, and so she's able to like snipe, and then she uses like illusion magic and the whole thing. She's like completely decimates this this unit. And so then she becomes an ace of ace, and she gets promoted to first lieutenant. And then we go to the war college portion. So after that, and again, some of this stuff, it, goes, it bounces back and forth between different people. Um, we're in a meeting with a bunch of generals and stuff talking about her promotion and her admittance to the war college. And again, the, our friend, the lieutenant colonel, who was scared of her, essentially, he shows back up, and he's like, we cannot let her in. And they're like, why? She's, like, the best soldier we have in the entire military. Like, she's aced everything. She's got she's an ace of ace. She's, like, a silver star recipient. She's got, like, some other medal, some, like, a brown star, essentially equivalent. Um, and she's already led, like, her platoon is, like, you know, immaculately done. And just all this successful stuff and all these recommendations reward. It's, like, there's, there's absolutely no reason that we're doing, like, a second review of this person. And the guy's just like, oh, you got to trust me, blah, 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 blah. And then the more he talks about it, the more these generals are like, wow, she sounds awesome. Let's, <laughs> let's send her to War College. So then she gets admitted to War College. And while she's there, she um, she runs into a general. And she's like, and, you know, this because of all this knowledge, she's like, all right, what do I got to say to this person so they recognize me, so I get some familiarity with them and, you know, show that I'm, like, really into the military so they promote me or keep me around. Or, you know, he's trying to get, like, put in the rear and stayed out of the battle so he can survive. And at some point, he goes off on, like, and we find out that, well... She was in, like, her cadet school or whatever. She wrote, like, a dissertation that people thought were, like, written by somebody at the War College, right? When she was, like, nine years old. And it talks about, like, transportation and stuff. And it's like, a, it's like a paper she wrote that, like, the transportation office of the military, like, the trains people are like, we're going to use this because this is excellently written. It's because it's written by, like, a 40-year-old man who's been doing, like, market research and, like, study of bureaucracies and stuff for years. Um, but, uh... Well, she, yeah, she, she runs into this Brigadier General, and they just have, like, a chit-chat, and she talks about how, like, oh, we're gonna, there's going to be, like, World War, and, you know, we got to do these things to prepare for it, and you need, like, a quick response force of mages and all this stuff, and he's like, oh, that's very interesting, and she's like, yeah, 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 and he's like, and so then he goes, <laughs> and he's talking to, like, his other general buddies, and like, hey, we got to make a quick response force for this this World War thing, this World War Three thing, or this World War thing, because this is going to happen, and we got to be prepared for it, and they're like, yeah, that's a good idea, we should do it, who should we put in charge, and he's like, we should put Tanya in charge. And like, meanwhile, Tanya's like, do, 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 do. <laughs> but they, they promote her to captain. She, she, I think she graduates like, she graduated like number two in the cadet school. And then she's graduating like the top of her class in this war college. And there's a moment where she like uses some psy psyops. There's a guy who's like the head, head of her in the class. And she's trying to make sure she makes captain. Um, or, you know, she's in that, like she, she becomes a knight, right? 
Um, and they use like the Vaughn instead of the Sir because it's like a more German Austrian based kind of thing. So she's like, oh, I'm right behind this. I'm right behind this. You know, I'm like, right. I just want to make sure that I, I get in this position where it's like I'm not the top of the class because I don't want to stand out too much. But at the same time, I want to be like recognized and get more money and more prestige and stuff. So she, she targets a guy who's got like a family who's kind of like wishy-washy about his career in the military. And she like goes in there and like really like um, – like psychologies him to, to like drop the position <laughs> so that she can like scooch up into that field. And so she comes a night. Um, so she gets Vaughn. So she's now like Tanya Vaughn. I can't remember her last name. It's like Stegorgoff Stigor- Stigor- or something. It's one of these like very German names. Um, and she's like super excited. And then she gets orders and she's like, oh my gosh. So then, so then um, she, yeah, she's in charge of this thing and she's like, oh my gosh. And so she's got to construct this, she's got to build this battalion of mages that she's going to be in charge of. And once she builds it, they'll promote her to major. And she's like, i got to like avoid doing this at all cost. Um, but the idea is that, so the Empire is surrounded, right? So you have the Western Front is you know, on Tunnel Alliance. They're beating the crap out of them. They're about to beat them. But the public is fighting in the North. In the South and East, there's like concerns because the, the military is not really getting combat uh, practice. And they don't want to move people away from the North and the West because it's like a precarious situation, even though they're winning. And so she, um, they want this quick response for her. So she starts putting it together and she comes up with all these schemes. Like she writes this, this application for it that is like, if you come, you will die. <laughs> and she gets like overwhelming amounts of like applicants. And she's like, oh my gosh. So then she constructs this like extremely arduous like um, requirement essentially to be accepted into it. They're like no one's passing. Like, and there's this whole thing where like the military police are like, man, they have like bets on how many people she's going to accept. And it's like, nobody gets accepted. Like they all lose because it's like so ridiculously tough. And then she also has this thing she does where she interviews them as like a pretend major who's like an illusion. And if you, they can't figure out that it's an illusion, then they're like automatically out. And then the people, the people around like the Eastern army are like, she's accepted nobody from the Eastern army. And so like, that's bull crap. And so she invites them to come and, and watch the interview. And it's like, very, it's super embarrassing <laughs> for them. They're like, we need this horse now. Tanya, like, what do we gotta? Maybe we have to lower standards. She's like, no, I'm not gonna lower standards. That's ridiculous. And they're like, well, and she's like, I'll try. I can train them, but, and they're like, well, we need we need this thing in like two months. She's like, I'll train them in a month, because her plan is she's gonna like essentially get them to all quit by training them so hard. But because she trains them so hard, she's able. She uses she combines like every special forces training that she can think of from every country in the world and like our world over there, and combines them all into like this harrowing month of like constantly constantly being like an hour of sleep at night being constantly bombarded like being attacked constantly like barely eating food um but then she ends up with like 48 people <laughs> she's like <laughs> but then she's like all right it's fine i got six months to like train them up but right at the end of the book she finds out they're like nope you're leaving now <laughs> she's like what no we need to like we need to have all these people like ready to go otherwise it's gonna be a complete disaster and they're like, well you can figure it out while you're down there and then she's like man it's like, and then, so her and her battalion, like, start heading down, and then they find out that this other this other cunt country to the south of them um, has declared war as well. And she's like, fuck. <laughs> and that's where the first light novel ends. <laughs> so, it's good. It's it's just, it is it is better than the anime. I love the anime. It's so good. Um, and I think this only covers, like, I can't remember any episodes, but it's definitely, like, the, the anime keeps going. The anime probably covers the first I think it's eight episodes, so it probably covers the first, like, two to four uh, volumes. But most of the, I mean, it, the, the anime doesn't get into so much into the politics and the jumping back and forth with people, but it, I feel like it covered most of the beats. Like, most of the stuff I was, I was listening to was in the audiobook, audiobook. I was like, yeah, okay, I remember I remember this. I remember these characters, vaguely. The names, like, elude me because I'm just bad at names, generally. But it was excellent. So if you get a chance to read the light novels or listen to them on audiobook, which you can find on audiobook, What's that torrent site I use? I don't remember. Anyway, there's like an audiobook torrent site. Audiobook Bay, I think. Um, it's excellent. So, highly, highly recommend it. I'm excited to listen to the other seven volumes that we have access to. And I think there's like 14 and ongoing. So, maybe someday I'll get around to those. But, cool. Catch y'all later.